oxygen is at a premium, especially for Swarner with one fully functioning lung. So now, everybody can see how exciting climbing Everest really is. It sucks. With him was a flag he planned to leave on the mountain. On it were about a hundred names of people whose lives had been touched by cancer. The idea was to take it as high as we could on Everest and then take a picture of it on the summit and then have like little words of encouragement on the back of the picture to give them some hope and thank them for helping us get there. On the morning of May 16th, 2002, Sean Swarner became the first cancer survivor to summit Mount Everest. He was crying when he radioed his brother at base camp. I told him, uh, you can let the world know that Seth Swarner's brother made it to the top of the world. As a small child, I looked up to him and said, wow, this guy can do anything. He's my big brother. And now, wow, this guy can do anything. He's my big brother. But climbing the world's highest mountain wasn't enough for Sean. I really enjoyed doing Everest. And we didn't exactly get the story out to as many people as we liked. So we thought by maybe doing the Seven Summits, we can reach more people. The Seven Summits are the highest points on each of the seven continents. His quest continued in 2003 with back-to-back -back climbs. First, he stood atop Kilimanjaro in Africa. Then nine days later, he climbed Elbrus in Europe. In 2005, he battled arid winds to conquer Aconcagua in South America. A year later, he cruised 7,300 feet to the top of Australia's Mount Kosciuszko wearing flip-flops. Number six was Vincent Massif, the highest point in Antarctica, where the temperature was 60 below, without a wind chill. Going up. Finally, in North America, there was Denali, the locals' name for Mount McKinley where only one in two climbers reached the summit. Swarner's first attempt in 2006 ended when a piece of equipment failed. Last year, in mid-May, a second trip up the mountain was aborted in the relentless cold, wind, and snow. A month later, in his third try, he pushed to the top. This is his seventh cancer climber. Told twice before that cancer would take his life. Denied twice before the summit of Denali. Sean Swarner at 6.20 on Tuesday evening, June 19, 2007, became the first cancer survivor to ascend the seven summits of the world. Yeah! How do you feel, buddy? What do you want to do? Woo! Good job, buddy. Way to finish yeah, it off. Buddy. Good job. But the mission was not finished. And that's why Sean Swarner is digging a hole. After chipping away at the ice and snow, after three expeditions and more than six weeks on the mountain, he finally buries the flag. Now numbering nearly 300 names, they are the ones touched by cancer. They are the ones who inspire him. When we see the tape of you on top, what can't we see? You probably can't see the emotions up close because I was crying like a little baby. And it just, the emotions let loose. I had to work for the goal. You know, it was my third attempt. It was persistence and determination that got me through it. Everyone touched by cancer, they carried me up there. I didn't get up there by myself. Steve Cyphers reporting. Sean Swarner has done the seven summits, but he has one more goal. When he adds both the North and South Poles to his accomplishments, he will have completed the Adventure Grand Slam. And then more immediately, he intends to be competing this October on the Big Island of Hawaii in the Ironman Triathlon.